Now we want to take you to the South Pacific, to an island nation where its very existence is in danger. The fear is rising that the seas surrounding it could eventually wipe the lush tropical paradise right off of the map. And residents there are already seeing their way of life change. Our Ginger Z traveled there to the Maldives where she saw the challenges firsthand, but also a groundbreaking solution. The Maldives. They may look like a bucket list vacation getaway. You know, the little luxury huts over aqua water you think you'd go when you win the lottery. Well, this chain of more than 1,100 coral islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean is a lot more than those white sand beaches. It's a richly diverse, welcoming nation with more than a half million people. But those people are under siege. The enemy? Rapid sea level rise. At the current rate of global warming, 80% of these islands could be uninhabitable by 2050. Sea level has risen a half inch every year since 1950, which may not sound like a lot, until you realize that in 2016, the Maldives lost their front line of defense. The last coral bleaching event was in 2016, and about 60% of corals were affected then. Without coral reefs, they're wide open to those rising waters. Nearly all islands are suffering severe erosion. And you know who goes down first in that scenario? It's not the luxury hotels like that island over there that have the ability and money to protect themselves. It's the 1,300 people who live on this island where they deal with massive plastic pollution, deep erosion. They tell us that this island and this beach went out 200 feet just five years ago. So when you look out here, how does it make you feel? Really desperate about this. Ibrahim Mubasir, or Muba as he asked us to call him, lives here on an island called Difushi. He and his daughter Sarah are living the extremes. So five years of, of Sarah's life and all she knows is floods every... It's flood every twice a month. Wow. And the water will go in your home, maybe up to here? Two feet, yeah. Yeah. Can you give me a little tour? Four years ago, their well became unusable. Salt water polluted it. Like 97% of the country, they no longer have fresh groundwater. Now it's only whatever only falls from the sky. From the sky. Mm. And do you have enough? No, we don't have enough. It will last like three months. So what do you do when sea level is rising and your islands are going under? You make your own island, like this. This is Hulumale, a largely man-made island. It's taken decades, millions of dollars. They've added the size of more than Central Park in New York City. And they say it's worth it because right here, they've built it up six and a half feet. That's double the size of most of their islands. Here's the problem though, the seas keep rising. So is this a relatively short-term solution? The impact of climate change for us, things that we thought would happen towards the end of the century, we are experiencing now. The Maldives environment minister says they're already in major debt, just trying to survive the rapid change. We've read that 50% of your national budget is spent on adapting to climate change. Is that number accurate? Even more, actually. More? None of the islands have fresh water anymore. And we are building uh, desalinated water plants on every island, and it's very costly. They call their man-made island Hulamale the city of hope, but hope is waning. Fast forward to 2050, what is the reality in the Maldives? Are you willing to take the Maldives as climate refugees? And I think that's the conversation that needs to happen. And it's not just the Maldives. Island nations from around the world have been asking developed nations for funds since 2009 because the countries with the highest emissions, China, the US, India among them, are mostly responsible for the rapid sea level rise that threatens the Maldives. There are 40 million people on the planet who are living on islands. Mm -hmm. We don't have high ground to go. Mohammed Nasheed, former president of the Maldives and a leading voice for climate change equity, is anxious to see what comes out of COP26. You warned us in 2009, loudly in Copenhagen, that, that there would be dire consequences for the Maldives if the rest of the developed nations did not take action and reduce emissions. If Maldives cannot be saved today, we do not feel that there is much of a chance 
for the rest of the world. It's been 12 years. The waves are stronger, the wind is stronger, and it's hotter. The reefs have bleached and they have died. Only six corals survived. Out of 500? Out of 500. And that was all bleached from all warm bleached, water? Yeah, from warm temperatures, and yeah. they couldn't come back, yeah. actually. We will see how they grow. On Vilanjili Island, Bebe Ahmed has become a coral yeah, reef hero. So we're going to do restoration. Traveling island to island with a mission, getting kids to save the beach. And your hope and dream is that they take this back and, and preserve around their island? I'm hoping they will take it to the island. Oh. A healthy coral reef can absorb 97% of wave energy, dramatically reducing erosion. Paradise. We made it. Summer Island. Even when it's made by a 3D printer. If we can't grow coral naturally or it's dying rapidly, we print it. We don't print the corals. Okay, right. We print the base, mm. we attach coral fragments, and we make them grow. Shall we? As big as it is, it's relatively small, though. It's really hard. Tell me the physics of how that stops water. It helps against erosion. Every little bit yeah. helps. From 3D printed coral to what looks like a 3D printed city. Three months from now, about four miles away from Male, their capital city, the world's first true floating city will begin construction. This soon to be floating city will be assembled in an existing lagoon. The unique pattern? Invented by a company called Dutch Docklands and modeled after the brain, both human and coral. We call this scarless cities. It's just renting space from nature. The new island will be a sustainable city with 5,000 homes. We take the cool water outside the lagoon and pump it in system through the roads and, and by that also activating the air conditioning systems. It's a solution that sounds far-fetched, but floating cities might just be the necessary Hail Mary. If we don't do anything to stop that erosion, I'm sure that Sarah can't live anymore here. She has to move to somewhere else. And we all know that the planet isn't the only thing we have to preserve. It's the diversity, culture, and beauty of the world that we really need to save. And we can do it one island at a time. Our thanks to Ginger. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.